American railroads have always been interesting when it comes to the development of their locomotives. The heavier loading gauges on most of their tracks allowed them to experiment in ways that wasn't possible in countries like the UK. While it led to some of the heaviest and most powerful machines to run on rails, along the way there were a few standout experiments. Introducing Camelback locomotives. There were two variants of the design. The early type designed by Ross Winans around the 1850s, and the second type that came later around the 1870s. Winans' original design involved mounting the cab and seating compartments on top of the locomotive's boiler to put as much weight on the driving wheels as possible in order to increase the engine's traction. These were known simply as camels. The additional weight helped improve traction, and the design was later refined to a 460 wheel arrangement, however the benefits weren't enough to justify the awkward design. Most camel locomotives were eventually used as inspection vehicles for railway directors, saving the need for special coaches. Later, John E. Wooten designed the Wooten firebox to burn waste coal, saving railway companies a large sum of money. The issue was the firebox was very wide, meaning the driver wouldn't be able to see ahead if the cab was mounted at the back of the engine. To get around this, the engines were designed so their cabs were mounted astride the boiler. The fireman, however, would still be located at the back of the engine with minimal protection from the elements. These engines were known as camelbacks because of their unusual design. Despite the weird appearance, the engines worked surprisingly well, saving the companies a significant amount of money in fuel costs as well as reliably hauling both goods and passenger trains. Most of the camelback designs were built in the 1920s but were still used well into the 1950s. The design wasn't by any means perfect however. Drivers were concerned about the fact they were positioned above the wheels and side rods, and that should the wheels slip and anything break, they'd be impaled by the broken side rods. As the rear of the engine didn't have a proper cab, the fireman would often be exposed to the elements while shoveling coal, eventually leading to the Interstate Commerce Commission to fully ban the construction of camelbacks by 1927. Some crews in Philadelphia and Reading referred to the engines as Mother Hubbards, while other crews from New Jersey called them snappers. After the introduction of mechanical stokers, most camelbacks had their cabs repositioned to the rear of the engine as the mechanical stokers required the rear deck of the engine to be set higher meaning the driver could see over the broad firebox. Not all were changed, but any engines that had mechanical stokers fitted would have their cabs repositioned. Overall, camelback locomotives are a very interesting solution to a rather peculiar problem. Sure, the cab could have been mounted higher at the back, but given how it likely wasn't feasible during the design stages of the build, I'd say the solution we got was alright. Hey, it's just like they say, if it works, it ain't stupid. Subscribe for more.